for a standard normal distribution, find P of Z greater than 0.72. Now the notation here reads P for probability, parentheses for of, so it reads the probability of a z-score randomly selected being greater than 0.72. So a standard normal distribution, well, first of all, a normal distribution is bell curve, but the standard normal distribution is a bell curve that is special. It has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, as I've noted here. And that's important to, to have set up if you're going to directly use the z-score table. You can have other normal distributions with different means and standard deviations, and there's a z-score conversion formula so that you can turn your boundaries into z-scores and then use the z-score table. But this one is straightforward. We're just going to go right into the z-score table since we're all already dealing with a standard normal distribution. And we can go ahead and sketch our boundary onto our curve here. So uh, 0.72 right about here. And I'm trying to draw a straight line. It's a little difficult for me because I'm on a very slippery uh, surface here, writing on a computer screen, but that's pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to give you a visual. Also, I see because it says greater than, we want to shade to the right all the z-scores that are greater than this value. And notice that now that I have divided it, the area under the curve, into two regions, I have a larger side, which, remember, the total area under the curve is 1. Dividing it down the middle, since it's symmetric, would be 0.5 on each side. So that would mean the area to the left here is larger than half, and the area to the right is less than half. So that's just good to keep in mind, uh, because I can see what my answer this area is going to be my answer, and it's less than half. So it'll just help me as I'm looking in the z-score table to make sure my answer makes sense. And also I should n mention that I know to look for this area because probability and area are interchangeable when it comes to cumulative probability distributions. So now let's go to the z-score table. There's a bunch of different ways we could find these answers, but We'll use the z-score table. One of the first things you can try that's very traditional is to look in the positive z-score table. We see, um, you know, 0.7 and then the last digit 2, and then the cross section is where we find the area. But this, this table gives you the area to the left of the z-score, and we are looking for the area to the right of the z-score. So we'll take that 0.7642, which is over here. And to get this other area, which we know should be less than half, which so certainly this should not be your an final answer, we're going to actually subtract the left area from 1. And that will give us our final answer, which is... .2358. Now there is another method you can use. You can go to the absolute value z-score table. That's kind of unique to my class. Uh, there's lots of different types, uh, you know, versions of z-score tables that you could find online. Um, for my class, I provide this absolute z-score table. Um, you know, negative z-score table and positive z-score table with an area to the left are very, very typical and traditional. Um, but you can also find some that are based on an absolute value. And this table is set up to give you the area that is smaller, and you can kind of ignore the sign of your z-score. And just know that whatever area you look up in the table, you're going to be given the area that is on this, the smaller area to this, to one or either the left or the right. So you can see I'm getting that answer of 0.2358 again. And still another way to do this is to use technology. And so if you're doing it with Excel, you can do norm.dist with your z-score of 0.72, the mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. Again, that's unique to standard normal distributions. And always choose true for cumulative. Now remember, 
this answer, since I'm expecting my area to be smaller than half, hopefully I would realize at this point that I need to subtract this answer from 1 to get the final answer here.